chose their friends well. Long have our peoples waged war, but no more. Your fallen lie beside our own. By our words and deeds, Shall we honor their sacrifice? The enemy of our enemy is our friend. And you have proven yourselves worthy of our trust. It is the Garleans who are deserving of our fury. I shall see that my brethren learn the truth of this day, and rally as many as possible to the cause, till we meet again. And thus did we make allies of the Amalja. It would certainly seem that way. The Sultana will be pleased. Let's go and give her the good news, shall we? What in Ralga's name happened here? The gods only know. But you can bet these poor sods aren't here by choice. Quickly! We've got to get them free! Done. It's too late for them. We're leaving now. Thank you. 
Fudola. Have you been waiting here all this time? We have done what we can. The rest is up to him. May we see him? I do not think that wise. You must let him sleep. Thank you for bringing him back. He owes you his life. I just... I, I just wish I had been there. Perhaps... I don't know. Perhaps I could have... Could have what? Got tempered? Don't flatter yourself. You can't save everyone. No one can. Not even the warrior of bloody light. People die all the time, for no good reason. And those who take up the sword die quicker than most. If you're going to shed a tear every time a soldier falls on the battlefield, you'd best stay away. It's no place for the weak of heart. It may be that victory cannot be won without cost. But all life is precious, and I refuse to shrug at its loss. All life is precious! <laughs> oh, you need to grow up, little man, before your sparkling ideals get everyone killed. You're right. He is idealistic. But the world has more than its fair share of realists, like you and me. It's people like him who dare to dream that things could be better and make it happen against all the odds. They are the ones whose names live on forever. The heroes. The battlefield's littered with would-be heroes. At this rate, you'll not be next. And what'll become of your precious dreams then? They'll be gone. Like dust on the wind. Dreams worth fighting for don't die so easily.
Your grace, pray forgive us our lateness. Think not of that. I understand a close comrade of yours was wounded in the line of duty. Arunvold. It was at the Alliance's behest that he risked all, and we are grieved to hear of his condition. Rest assured, he will receive the finest care our chirurgeons can provide. On that you have my word. Now, we would share with you the findings of the mission. Pippin, pray relate to our guests the details of Fordola's account. First Bahamut, now Ifrit. Or Luna Ifrit, as Fan Daniel would doubtless have it. Tis now all but certain that the towers were conceived to facilitate the summoning of primals by those imprisoned within. Less certain is the means by which the Telophoroi constrain the wills of said entities to enact their designs in defiance of the pleas of their victims. Mayhap they do not. If mere proximity to the towers is enough to make loyal servants of the Empire's mortal enemies, it stands to reason that the same is true for those held captive. They invoke their gods for the good of Garlemald, and in their disturbed state of mind, summon a primal whose form reflects their own alteration. It all begins to make sense. Upon closer inspection, I realize that the towers bear a striking resemblance to a much larger structure which Uriange and I observed from afar during our visit to the Imperial capital. Assuming it too is capable of tempering those in its immediate vicinity, it would go some way to explain the swiftness with which the Telophoroi managed to rally so many Imperials to their cause. While the situation in Garlemald is indeed troubling, I fear we have more immediate concerns. Ifrit was not the only primal summoned. At approximately the same time, observers at several other towers bore witness to the emergence of further such entities. For a blessing, None appear to wield aught approaching the destructive power of Bahamut, and the Grand Companies are moving to deal with the threat even as we speak. Though we are aware that the task will not be easy, we would call upon the Scions only as a last resort. Pray, conserve your strength for now. After all, it was not so very long ago that you rid us of Bahamut. On which note, I am pleased to report that our talks with the Amalja have reached an agreeable conclusion. They have pledged their full support to our cause. It is our hope that this historic agreement will encourage other tribes to join us at the negotiating table. And I know that I speak for all of the Allied leaders when I say that we will welcome them with open arms at such time as they do. Of course, this was only made possible by the feats of heroism performed at Pagelfarn. Moreover, we shall not allow the sacrifices of those fallen in battle to have been made in vain. As hope leads to victory, shall victory lead to a new dawn for Eorzea. May these words ever be our guide, Your Grace. Now, if you will forgive me, I must consult with the Syndicate on the matter of our new allies' integration. Till next we meet, my friends, I bid you safe travels and blessed respite.
Welcome back. I expect you must all be exhausted. Ere you take your rest, however, I would beg a moment of your time. Thanks to Arnvold's selfless efforts, we may now be confident that we understand the function of the towers. But many questions remain regarding the reason for the summonings, and what lurks behind the looming edifice in Garlemald. Until such questions are answered, we will struggle to devise an effective strategy for thwarting the Telophoroi's stated aim. Nothing less than the destruction of this star. And so, given the gravity of the situation, I move that we petition the aid of Charlian. It is possible the ancient knowledge preserved within our archives may hide a clue to our enemy's methods. But given Charlian's established policy of non-intervention, our former colleagues are not like to aid us in its discovery. Oh, I well remember what they're like. The Forum's barefaced refusal to assist you in the days prior to the Calamity must rank as Charlian's most shameful act since the Exodus. But were the final days to be reenacted, it would spell doom for us all. Surely even they cannot turn a blind eye to that. I trust we are all of the same mind on this matter. Urgent as it seemed, I took the liberty of petitioning the Alliance for leave to act as Eorzea's emissary, and have since received their blessing. I presume your role as a student of Baldessian will carry some weight with the Forum? One can but hope. If truth be told, our organization has been a shadow of its former self ever since the disappearance of the Isle of Val. But the name does still retain some degree of prestige. I only pray it will be enough. If there are no objections, I shall depart for Charlian at once. But before I do, I should also mention the other matter to which I would devote some time during my stay. After hearing what transpired in the first, I began to question the true nature of Heidelin's blessing, a topic I have discussed at some length with Yishtola. We were wondering, when was the last time Heidelin spoke to you directly? When Elidibus sought to make warriors of light, that was the voice which calls constantly to all who might hear it. I spoke of direct communication, when Hydaelyn communed solely with you. A far rarer occurrence. History shows us that Hydaelyn is able to awaken the echo in her chosen, convey her will directly, and grant the blessing of light. To our knowledge, however, she has not sought to intervene in man's affairs for some considerable time. Might not the explanation for that lie with her choice of champion? Mayhap she is content to trust in his judgment. Mayhap she is. But following my initial discussion with Kryle, I made inquiries of my own. And as far as I am able to tell, Hydaelyn has not made her will known to anyone. During my time in the First, the Oracle of Light spoke to me through Reen. But that was not the will of Hydaelyn. It was Minfilia herself. Indeed. And while she and Hydaelyn were inextricably linked, Minfilia yet acted of her own volition. A messenger, yes, but one who spoke with her own voice. I wonder... Could Hydaelyn's silence suggest the presence of some disruptive force, perhaps? Some obstacle to communication. While I share Urianger's high opinion of your conduct, I see no reason why she would deny you her guidance altogether. Then again, who am I to say? The fact is, we simply don't know. But if the explanation is to be found anywhere, 
I can think of worse places to look than the archives of Charlian, and their research on the Ethereal Sea in particular. Resolved though I am to go, believe me when I say that I take no pleasure in the thought of leaving you a member short. Now of all times. Estinian, we stand on the eve of a struggle that will decide the fate of this star. One in which we Scions may play a telling part, yet we are but few in number. And so I must ask you again. Will you join us? You see the world the way you want it to be. I see the world the way it is. You are idealistic to a fault. But I know you would never turn your back on those in need. Never close your eyes to their suffering. And somehow, your deeds lend truth to your words, giving the lie to my doubts in so doing. I have seen others draw strength from your belief. In Ishgard, in Alamigo, you inspired them to stand up and fight. To win, no less. And even when you lost those you held dear, you carried their spirit with you and made their memory your guiding light. The burden of so many hopes and dreams would be too heavy for most to bear. But you bear it willingly, as you have shown me. Some dreams are too important to let go. If you have need of my strength, it's yours. After all you've done, how could I refuse? Thank you, Estinian. Whatever challenges await us, I shall not falter. You have my word. And now, I may bid you farewell. Safe in the knowledge that all is as it should be. In this little corner of the world, at least. You will be sorely missed. Tread warily in Charlian, and do try not to let the Forum embroil you in their politics. A forlorn hope, I know, given the individuals involved. I shall do my very best. Farewell. Does this one meet with your approval? <laughs> Apparently not. Or... Could it be that you're still upset about the dragons? You are unwise to remind me of so costly a failure. It will not affect our plans, I trust. Oh, hardly at all. Though, 
Admittedly, the chances of us being able to procure any more Merosidian dragons are rather slimmer following Tiamat's reappearance. Oh, but the seeds have been sown, my lord! We have only to wait for them to quicken! Speaking of preparations, is it safe to assume that you will be ready to control you-know-what? The hour draws nigh. This nation, forged for Asian ends, will finally prove its worth. <laughs> A mighty empire, now no more than an instrument of this star's destruction. What a pleasure it will be to put it to use. Which brings me back to our earlier topic. My lord, while I appreciate that it is not an easy decision, it really is past time you chose your weapon. There is one that I have been meaning to test. Well, well, not quite what I was expecting, though I will say. It does seem rather apt.